Blueprint series on Java Tutorial for Beginners. In this video, we'll take a look at User Input Output. So we have so far seen variables and data types and the only way of printing output on the console is system.out.println that we have seen before. So we'll take a look at what else we can use for output. Also, we'll take a look at how we can take user input in our program. But before we jump into that, we'll take a look at what a program is made up of, what is the syntax of a program, and also we'll discuss a bit about Java bytecode. So let's start. A program, as you see, is a combination of two or more of the things shown on the screen. Input, output. Output is like the very basic. Almost every Java program has some output that you will want to display on the console. Then there are maths operations, there's testing, and there is repetition. Repetition means some code that you want to repeat again and again. Loops, basically. And also, iterative conditional statements. So this is what all in combination form a Java program. Now, the syntax of the program is actually the grammar of any program for any language. So for Java, as you saw, we have started our file with the package name, then we go to class name, then inside the class name, we define our main method. Now, apart from the main method, there can be multiple methods, but then in the main method, there can be multiple lines, could be output lines, variable declarations, loops, etc, etc. So, each program has this structure and this syntax about it. Likewise, as you see the examples here, there is error in this sentence and also in this one. So, if we take English as a example language, in the first sentence, the spelling of this is wrong, while in the second sentence, there has to be a full stop at the end. So if you compare this with our Java programming language, a sentence or a programming line will throw you an error if you don't put a semicolon at the end. So these basic nitty gritties of a programming language form the syntax of the language. Now that being said, what happens to your Java file when you run it and at what different stage what kind of errors you can encounter. So as we saw program also has to have testing to see if it's working fine or not. And when you are testing you should be aware of what kind of error is thrown at what part of the program. So we'll take a look at that now. As you see in the diagram here your source code file is your .java file. So whatever name of the file you give, .java extension, is the source Java file. Now when this file is compiled, it gives you a bytecode file, that is .class file. Now this file can be interpreted easily and we see the right results on our screen. Now where all can you encounter an error and what actually is that error type? So if at compile time, when you're compiling your program, you get any error, it is called as compile time error or also known as syntax error. So if there is an error during compile time, that means the syntax of your program somewhere is haywire. Either there is a missing brace or there is a missing semicolon or something of that sort that is not getting the syntax of the program right. If the compiled program is not run properly. Now, if the program is compiled just fine, but you are getting error at the runtime, it is called as runtime error or also known as exceptions. So these are the error that you encounter once you run your program. Also, if your program has run fine, but still the output is incorrect, it is not as per what you expected it to be, those errors are called as logical or syntactical errors. So that means your structure is fine, everything is just fine, but somewhere in the logic you have missed something because of which your output is not correct. So those are called syntactic errors. So this was all about our program syntax and bytecode. Now, to take input from the user, what you need is a scanner class. So scanner class reads input from the keyboard which you can further use in your program to do some operations or to print out on the console. So it provides many methods to read this 
input and pass various primitive values which we'll see later on. So this scanner class lists some methods of scanner class. Next, next line, next byte, next short, next int, next long, next float and next double. So if you say at any point of time next line, it takes the next line that is typed by the user. Or if you say next int, it will parse the next integer value that is typed by the user. If user doesn't type the integer value, it will give you an error. All right. So scanner class has these many methods that we can use. We'll quickly take a look at how to do that in Eclipse. So as you see here on the screen, this is a new file that I have created, user input class. And we have main inside with comments to give your auto-generated code. Now let's see how we import a class. So the first line in your file always is the name of the package, which is Java tutorials. After this, you can give any import statements. So as we saw, scanner class is used for taking user input. So we need to import that scanner class into this program, which is fairly simple. Import Java dot util dot. Now you can see here scanner. So this will import the scanner class. Now, if at any point of time you don't know which particular class you have to import, but you know it is in the util package and you can just give star here. So this star, what it does it, it imports all the classes that are there in this util package. But for now, we'll just import scanner. So once we have imported the scanner class, we go inside and create the scanner object. So let's say in underscore one is the variable name that we choose and we create a new object. We give the keyword new scanner and then we say here system dot in. All right. So now you can read the input stream. So let's say if our input stream that is in underscore one dot has next let's say int let's say we check for int so if our input stream has an integer value what we do is we just print it on the screen or let's say store it in a variable input and how do we store it in a variable we give the name I n underscore one dot next int. Since we have to check for the integer value, we say next int. Okay. And then we just go ahead and print this on the screen. All right. So if our input has an integer, it will print this on the screen. Else, if it doesn't have an integer, just type saying please enter integer fairly simple right please enter an integer value okay so let's save and run this so when you now run this you need to give a input so since you're giving an input you see it in a different color hit enter and you see the output 567 if you run it again it will ask for your output. Let's say this time you say hello, which is not an integer. So it will go to the else part and print the line. Please enter an integer value. So to take the input, all we have to do is check next int and put. Also, as we saw in our slide, we can use other values here. Let's say next line. And if we don't have to check, we can remove this part altogether the complete if else construct delete it and let's just say um, system output i n underscore one dot next line so one thing good about using an ide is whenever you give a function you can see what that function does so next next string next boolean next float double next line so when you click on next line, you can read all about the function here. So let's say next line. All right. 
save it again and run so now when you say hello it will print the whole line so this is input now output also is very interesting so let's say comment out these lines for now let me just show you the output one way to print output is system.out.println so you say hello now what println does is it moves your output to the next line so if now you print hi this will be printed in the next line as we have used println here now if you don't want to move to the next line you can simply say print when you say print your next output will be printed after this line only so save it run see hello hi since there is no next line in the end so one way to do next lines is you say print ln or you can also give here escape sequence right so that way also you will see the output in the next line these are the two different ways for printing your outputs so i hope you enjoyed this video try to do more of user inputs to practice how the scanner different type work next end next double you can try all of those things out and keep practicing thank you for watching and happy coding